Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So here's the eight hour silver chart that we were looking at, expecting that we needed to get some follow through on the action, which we did not get. And you can see here with this arrow that we put in a lower peak um, sell signal on the MACD. As we're falling down, you can see matching this trend line. I guess our other trend line, we'd probably want to draw it from right about here. So we're now in an unresolved pendant formation. It could tighten up, go sideways, but we don't appear to be getting that move that would confirm the fifth buy signal down here. So we're going to wait and see. 20 does seem to be that resistance point now, and uh, probably we'll just have some more consolidation. It's, it's unfortunate because that was an opportunity to make a fairly large move up but it's just not in the cards right now let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart it's rising a fairly steady pattern you can see the major trend line drawn back from uh, August of 2015 at, at that 162 price of course this is on the bit the next chart so that chart was much more volatile because it was a futures driven sell-off at this point that went significantly lower than the other markets went but still a move from 162 low to where we are right now at about 630 you can see that we had that spike up to near 800 and then a significant sell-off but we've had about a 50 percent retracement probably 50 to 75 percent somewhere in there probably a fibonacci number i don't pay too much attention to those you see we didn't come back down to the pennant but we're rising uh, so the next test is going to be the resistance up in here 700 is going to be a key target and of course on to 800 still very bullish in the long term you can see that we're rising out of that fairly large bottoming formation still looking to challenge those old twelve hundred dollar highs on Bitcoin now we're going to spend the rest of the night talking about the SDR. We're going to go over this Jim Rickards article and get a little bit of information from the IMF itself about the SDR. Overall, it's a very confusing topic for me, and uh, I, I just don't really completely understand how the thing operates. Uh, maybe you'll understand more after watching the video, but let's read this latest article from Jim Rickards. This is titled, Here's a Timetable for the Dollar's Demise. And it's about the soon happening changes with the SDR. So I'm going to go down to the summary here. What will happen in the next five weeks is just as significant as any of the monetary earthquakes mentioned above. And he went through the history of the SDR, Bretton Woods, etc. There are three major events happening in rapid sequence. Here's the list. On September 4th, the G20 leaders meet in Hangzhou, China. Obviously, that's already happened. On September 30th, the yuan officially joins the SDR basket of currencies. On October 7th, the IMF holds its annual meeting in Washington, D.C. You might be tempted to discuss this calendar as business as usual. G20 leaders meetings happen every year. The SDR basket has been changed many times in the past. The IMF has global meetings twice a year, spring and fall, but it's not business as usual. This time, it's different. The hidden agenda involves the formal transition from a dollar standard to an SDR standard in world monetary affairs. It won't happen overnight, but the elite decisions to and seal of approval will take place at these meetings. The SDR is a source of potentially unlimited global liquidity. That's why SDRs were invented in 1969 when the world was seeking alternatives to the dollar, and that's why they will be used in the imminent future. SDRs were issued in several tranches during the monetary turmoil between 1971 and 1981 before they were put back on the shelf. In 2009, also in a time of financial crisis, a new issue of SDRs was distributed to IMF members to provide liquidity after the panic of 2008. The 2009 issuance was a case of the IMF testing the plumbing of the system to make sure it worked properly. 
with no issuance of SDRs for 28 years. From 1981 to 2009, the IMF wanted to rehearse the governance, computational, and legal processes for issuing SDRs. The purpose was partly to alleviate liquidity concerns at the time, but also partly to make sure the system works in case a large new issuance was needed on short notice. The 2009 experience showed the system worked fine. Since 2009, the IMF has proceeded in slow steps to create a platform for massive new issuance of SDRs and the creation of a deep liquid pool of SDR denominated assets. On January 7, 2011, the IMF issued a master plan for replacing the dollar with SDRs. This included the creation of an SDR bond market, SDR dealers, and ancillary facilities such as repos, derivatives, settlement and clearance channels, and the entire apparatus of liquid bond market. In November 2015, the Executive Committee of the IMF formally voted to admit the Chinese yuan into the basket of currencies into which the SDR is convertible. In July 2016, the IMF issued a paper calling for the creation of a private SDR bond market. These bonds are called MSDRs for marketed SDRs in contrast to the OSDRs for official SDRs. In August 2016, the World Bank announced that it would issue SDR denominated bonds to private purchasers. Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, ICBC, the largest bank in China, will be the lead underwriter on the deal. Other private SDR bond issues are expected soon. On September 4, 2016, the G20 leaders will meet in Hanzhou, China, under the leadership of G20 President Xi Jinping, who is also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China. In this meeting, other world leaders will metaphorically kowtow to new Chinese emperor and recognize China as the co-head of the global monetary system alongside the U.S., On September 30th, 2016, at the close of business, the inclusion of the Chinese yuan in the SDR basket goes live. On October 7th, 2016, the IMF will hold its annual meeting in Washington, D.C. to consider additional steps to expand the role of SDRs and make China an integral part of the New World Money Order. Over the next several years, we will see the issuance of SDRs to transnational organizations such as the UN and the World Bank, to be spent on climate change infrastructure and other elite pet projects outside the supervision of any democratically elected bodies. I call this the new blueprint for worldwide inflation. Thereafter, the international monetary elite will await the next global liquidity crisis. When that crisis arrives, there will be massive issuance of SDRs to return liquidity to the world and cause global inflation. The result will be the end of the dollar as the leading global reserve currency. Based on past practice, we can expect that the dollar will be devalued by 50 to 80% in the coming years. A devaluation of this magnitude will wipe out the value of your life savings. You'll still have just as many dollars, but they won't be worth nearly as much. The time to start preparing is now. And that's, again, that's Jim Rickards, Business Insider. So interesting information. Now, you know, I've mentioned in the past, I take everything that Jim Rickards says with a grain of salt. He's a CIA insider, but it's still important to pay attention to what he says because for the exact reason that he is connected to those people, they are are planning something. Now, let's go and get the information from the horse's mouth. This is from the IMF directly, and this is their attempt at an explanation of the SDR. So we're gonna watch this video, and then I'm gonna comment on this. The Special Drawing Rights, or SDR, was created by the IMF in 1969 to supplement the official reserves of its member countries. The SDR is an interest-bearing international reserve asset that can only be held by the IMF, its member countries, and designated official entities known as prescribed holders. In addition to this role, the SDR serves as the unit of account of the IMF and several other international organizations. The IMF's financing arrangements with its member countries are denominated in SDRs. The value and yield of the SDR are defined using a basket of major currencies, which are selected due to their importance in the world's trading and financial systems. The SDR value is calculated daily, while its interest rate is determined on a weekly basis. 
The IMF Executive Board reviews the composition of the SDR basket every five years. This composition is revised to reflect major changes in the roles of various currencies in the world economy, and thus to enhance the attractiveness of the SDR as a reserve asset. In its most recent review in 2015, the board expanded the basket to include a fifth currency, the Chinese renminbi. The basket will now include the US dollar, euro, Chinese renminbi, Japanese yen, and pound sterling. SDRs are allocated to members in proportion to their IMF quotas and relative economic standing in the world economy. Every five years, the IMF reviews whether there is a global need for additional international reserves to justify a new allocation of SDRs. The most recent and by far the largest allocation took place in 2009 as part of the response to the global financial crisis. Currently, the amount of SDRs stands at over 204 billion. These allocations provide each member with on-demand access to freely usable currencies. Members can exchange SDRs for freely usable currencies from other members to meet a balance of payments need or to adjust the composition of their reserves. The SDR is therefore not a currency, nor a claim on the IMF, but a potential claim on the freely usable currencies of IMF members. At the time of the allocation, a member country is assigned two positions of the same amount, its SDR allocation and its SDR holdings. It receives interest on its holdings and pays interest on its allocation. The interest earned by a member on its holdings and paid out on its allocations are both based on the SDR interest rate. This means they cancel out completely as long as SDR holdings are equal to SDR allocations. The SDR market functions primarily through voluntary trading arrangements or VTAs. Under these arrangements facilitated by the IMF, members volunteer to buy or sell SDRs. If a member exchanges SDRs for freely usable currencies, its SDR holdings fall while its foreign currency reserves rise. If its holdings fall below its cumulative allocations, it has to pay interest on the shortfall. If a member exchanges freely usable currencies for SDRs, its SDR holdings rise above its cumulative allocations and it earns interest on the excess. In the event that there is insufficient capacity under the voluntary trading arrangements, the IMF can activate the designation mechanism, where it calls upon members with strong external positions to purchase SDRs from members with weak external positions. The value of the SDR as a reserve asset thus derives from the right to exchange it for freely usable currencies. Through this, the SDR plays an important role in providing liquidity to the global economic system. So, if any of that makes any sense to you, then you're way beyond me because all that video for me does is just raise more questions than it answers. Uh, how is $200 billion enough when we have quadrillions in derivatives? Uh, why would a country be interested in funding this when they can just use their own currency? The Chinese currency isn't yet freely exchangeable. How could it possibly be a part of this? Um, if you're running a trade deficit, which the U.S. does perpetually, then how do you have any type of standing as far as having reserves? So there's a lot of questions that I have about it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But uh, I, I ask for your help on understanding this and what you think it's going to be if you buy into Jim Rickard's theory. And... Uh, also, a wild card, of course, in this thing is going to be Donald Trump. What is his position on this? I haven't researched it. Uh, what would you do if you were Donald Trump? What type of position would you take on it? Uh, it could be a very risky gamble because if the IMF decides to uh, go ahead with this and the U.S. decides to opt out of it, it may be looking at a world where the U.S. doesn't have a role to play that could even be more than an 80% devaluation in the value of the dollar. So 
very serious stuff. Again, it's coming October 1st, basically the month of October. All these things are going to happen right before the elections in the U.S. One more thing that could make for a very exciting time. So, again, the silver chart in a sideways pattern. We just have to wait and watch and see uh, whether the buy signals are going to be valid or whether we're going to start getting a series of valid sell signals. And we'll talk to you next time.